a uh, overview of my new drawing. It's a 10 inch screen single den unit with the uh, new amplifier that drawing offers is built in. I don't know the model number yet. It uh, was a replacement from my previous one. If you see my other video, I have one that died. A old 8 inch. That was, I liked a lot. It just uh, overheated and quit working. They have since repaired it, uh, but at this point, they sent me this one in the meantime as a replacement, and I like it a lot. So, a lot of people won't like the 10 inch screens. It looks like a tablet slapped on your dash. I did this install late at night, and I have too much space there. I gotta redo it. I bought a new bracket to fix it, so it won't take out as much, but still. Anyway, you shake it, it's gonna be a basically a tablet on your screen, a tablet on your dashboard. So, uh, you can see it sticks out a little bit, but and like I said, some of this can be fixed with the new Metro Hornet Metro bracket, but uh, regardless. Sometimes that's what you get if you want a 10 inch screen in your dash in a 2016 Jeep Wrangler. There's not a lot of options. So, uh, for now, this is the way it, I have mine set up. Uh, this, this is the drawing uh, user interface, the default user interface it has. It's pretty good. They have large uh, icons here you can access. Um, that wallpaper is just one of the built in wallpapers, there's plenty choose from. And I'll make just a darker one so it looks a little more plain. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, that looks... so there's a lot of different options here. You know. Yeah, so I change them, but and there's live wallpaper too. Uh, let's see, I don't want that one. Live wallpapers. There we go. So if you wanted to do like black hole, which is an old school uh, joint, or old school Android one, right? That looks pretty neat. I'll just spin a wire going there. So it's pretty cool. Um, so. Uh, here's your, you turn the Jeep on or any vehicle you're in, I'm in a 2016 Jeep Wrangler. I should clarify, this is the 2016 Jeep Wrangler with the bass audio, uh, unlimited with the bass audio originally. So it had just the eight speakers, no Alpine system. Uh, I have since replaced my bass speakers with the Mopar Kicker 77 Kick 10s and I added a Kicker uh, amp sub combo. But the amp just taps into my speaker wires and self powered so the only thing powered from this head unit are the joint uh, are the uh, four coax joint uh, Mopar kicker 77 kick 10 speakers. So again, uh, I don't know the model number, but uh, before I post this, I should have it, and hopefully, I'll just have that sitting right here. So. Uh, as I was saying, the so here's your interface. It's got nice big icons. Uh, when you first set it up, they have these built-in join widgets that I don't really care. If, I mean, they're nicer than previous ones, but they don't work uh, super great. So it's like this guy. It's a weather widget, but it stays in Celsius. It doesn't do anything. We doesn't. You know, you click it, goes to date and time. It doesn't do any. It never shows you actual weather. So uh, I got rid of it, and I use AccuWeather. I found AccuWeather is the best as far as on a joining unit to update the weather itself. Like you can see, uh, this was updated. I didn't op it automatically update itself at 2:37, and you can but you can see. You know, like a couple of days. Actually, you can see one. You can't see it in the video. Let me change the wallpaper again. How about this guy? Alright, so it gives you a little better, but... So, uh, you know, back to... So we'll go through it step by step. Here's your actual home screen. Anytime you hit home, it takes you back here. This uh, button, like an Android app drawer, takes you to all your apps. If you go over far enough, it'll take you to widgets. 
and then it just ends, right? Yeah. I'm still gonna go back to my original one. And you can put apps in from the, you can put in wallpapers from the app store. Uh, I just find this one shows things the best. Alright, so, uh, as far as joining built in apps, uh, I've added one weather, I've added AccuWeather, that's auxiliary, goes to an input in the back that I don't have hooked up now. I, I just purchased a camera I'm going to try to set up uh, for a front camera, not a reverse camera. I already have a reverse camera, but so here's their built in auxiliary, there's just some settings there. And I don't know what that guy's supposed to do. Probably goes to your equalizer, I don't know why. If you want your equalizer, I guess you could have an auxiliary input there, it could be audio. Alright, so that's built in. This is your built in Bluetooth for your phone, and this is for your music. So, right now I don't have my phone connected, but if you did, it would be, it'd show the name of your phone is. So, like, uh, I currently have a Huawei Mate 9, it would show what I named my phone there. Contacts, I don't have any, but we'll show you contacts if you set it up. And. Here's where you reconnect it. You can change the name of the device. That's what you'll see in the Bluetooth. You can change the password. And then you have some, this ring tone size. That's how you change how loud it rings whenever you get a call coming in when you're driving. And here's your link. If you wanted to add a device, you would click it. Search for it here. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I will say Bluetooth works on this one pretty good, uh, much better than my previous device. So, uh, what we have uh, else here on the home screen, we go to. Alright, so after that, we have the Bluetooth music. If I had something connected, it will say the title of your uh, song that you're playing. Uh, actually, well, let me go ahead and connect my device. Alright, I'll go ahead and I'll just connect it while we're here. So I'm recording this on my Moto Z2 Force. Uh, I had a little problem with it, so it's going to go back to T-Mobile and they're going to replace it. In the meantime, I'll be using my Huawei Mate 9, which I'm a big fan of. Alright, so first we do is we go to your link. And i got to get my Huawei on the Bluetooth screen. Alright, so my Huawei's on the Bluetooth screen, and now I'm going to search for devices. Uh, it's my TV, and so yeah, I can see my TV from inside the house, that's pretty cool. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Uh, it doesn't see my Huawei showing up here, but I do see uh, the Join here. So, I'm just going to hit the button on my phone for Join, and see if it pops up a connection. You can see the Bluetooth icon popped up here, and it's showing connected. I think I've already connected these in the past, that's what it is. Alright, yeah, so you can see it's connected for phone, audio, media, auto, internet access. Uh, internet access is a mixed bag. It's a much longer conversation than this review needs to be. But you see, yeah, there we go, so now we're tied to my mate now. Alright, so, now if we go back to Bluetooth music, uh, I'll play something from my phone. And we'll go to Sirius XM and let's play some Howard Stern. Get name recognition. Oh, there it goes. So you can see it's. If I play Howard Stern, it shows the name of the show. If I play music, it should say the name of the artist. So let me get Google Play Music up and. Let's just play some. Let's play some Ice Cube. Yeah. There you go. So you can see Crowded Ice Cube. And that's the name of the song. Ice Cube's the artist. You can see it there. And you can play from here. Yeah. Yeah. And they can pause it, right? So that's good. And you can play it. And the volume controls work here. And if I wanted to change the track here, 
as soon as I click it, it changes the song. So that's pretty good. And I don't know what stop does on music. I guess it just pauses it. Alright, for any enjoying application, built-in application here, the back arrow will close it out. So if I wanted to play it, and then, then go home, the music's still playing in the background. But now if I go to the Bluetooth music app and back out, it closes it and shuts the music down. So you can background the music if you want to, or you can close it down. All right, uh, the next up would be, they have their built-in browser. I never use that. It's uh, I just install a third-party browser if I need it. They got a built-in calculator. It's actually pretty cool looking. If you ever need to do math in your Jeep or whatever vehicle you have. So, it's pretty good though. Uh, same thing, you just do that to close it. So then we have car settings. This is where the bulk of your built-in joying controls will be. So, uh, any key boot. I don't really know what that does. I think if you the screen's dark and you touch that, it will go on. I uh, do not know what enter airplane mode and dormancy means. Well, dormancy is whenever... I'm guessing here. Dormancy is, so this Joy, it's one of the best features they have over the other Chinese manufacturers is that once you turn the device off, they'll come right back on. Uh, here, I'll give you an example of that right now. So, right now my Jeep is on. Turn it off. Screen's still working. Open the door. Screen is off. And as soon as I turn my Jeep back on, boom. We're up and running, right? And that doesn't matter, I man. I really, some of the older uh, Chinese units would have a two hour standby mode, but this one just does it pretty much forever. I guess at some point it'll shut off, but I've left it for several days and it comes right back on just like that, so it's pretty great. Uh, so I assume inner airplane mode will mean it just shuts off. Once it goes into dormancy, it shuts off your antennas and stuff, so that way, I guess to save battery or whatnot, I save your car battery or save the draw on the vehicle itself. So, uh, what we also have here now is brake set. So, brake set would be it replicates having your vehicle tight, your emergency brake on, so you can play videos or whatnot when you need to be on screen display time. I don't really know what that does. Oh, I think that, well, okay, maybe that means if you. Uh, let's see, off screen, nope, alright, so I don't know what that does, it was already on when I got it, so I'll leave it that way, mirror view, that will reverse the backup camera view, I believe, so, alright, so there's my camera, and let's see what this does, So it swaps the mirror in case your camera's backwards on capacity. And yeah, so that's the way it should be for me. Alright, mute when reversing. That means that when you go in reverse, if your music playing, it will mute it for you. Uh, I don't want that to happen, so I'll turn that off. Backlight control, that will be when these lights on the side come on. So right now it's listed as small light control. That means whenever I turn on my lights to the Jeep, it turns it on so right now they're off turn my parking lights on you can see now they lit up and then turn it off so if you change it to this one they can set a time for it to come on like if you want them to be in these these lights to come on 7 p.m. every night or something of that nature but I don't want it I want that tied to my headlights default volume switch I'm not sure what that does or GPS mix that has something to do with the volume mixing between if you have music and your GPS talking at the same time, uh, never do that. I always mute my GPS, so those are irrelevant to me. But that's how you would set it. If you had a, if you wanted your GPS to talk to you and you wanted your music louder than your GPS or vice versa, one of those controls will adjust it. How, I don't know. So, because uh, again, I don't use those. 
lantern settings controls the color of these lights here. So they're not as adjustable as the older units were. It has yeah, just this green, blue, and this, yeah, I don't really like blue. White's not really white, it's kind of blue looking too. Um, supposed to be orange, looks kind of greenish. Red. And supposed to be purple, but again, looks kind of weird. I usually leave it on red, I guess that kind of matches the red speedometer uh, line there, but the old ones used to match the Jeep colors perfect, but these do not, but reds usually want to stick to. Sound mixing scale, okay, so this is also is somewhere tied into whatever these default volume switch, default volume switch is and GPS mix and sound mixing scale. So this is how loud something is, either GPS or music, I don't know which is which. Again, I don't use it. So reversing sound reduction, I do use. So this is how loud you want it to reduce the volume when you put it in reverse. So if you have it at 20, else the volume stays the same when you go reverse. Uh, I have it at half volume, so. Uh, let's see. So let's play some music. Uh, let's see. Alright, let's just play. the music there now I'll put in reverse you can hear it still playing it's just much quieter and then if I put it back in gear it goes back up reverse lower Full volume. all right so that's good for uh, you know you want to make sure you're paying attention when you back it up but you don't want dead silence so that's how I use it uh, DV, default boot volume. So that's if you do a full reboot, what volume it sets it to. Uh, so the volumes go up pretty high. So like there's seven, it goes all the way up to what 36. I almost never go above 22. So when I first turn it on, I don't want it to go that high. So I have my default volume, default volume set to none. That will be if you do a full reboot, not the same as if you just turn it off and come back on, come back to the thing. Steering wheel setting that just shortcuts you to these controls to program the steering wheel keys uh, on the back of the or the front, depending on what vehicle you have. I made another video uh, explaining how to set this up. That should be in my other videos. I'll put a link in the description to that as well. Alright, Navi app. So that just means what navigation app you have tied to this button here. It doesn't really have to be navigation, really. It will tie you. Any button you want to tie to this little icon, you can pick any of these apps. So if I wanted YouTube to pop up anytime I push this button, you could do that. Uh, I believe I actually use it for navigation, so I'll use Google Maps on it. Alright, so beyond there. Uh, Mad Adapt Copy. I have no idea what that does. Driver's Door Position. Uh, that would just, I guess if you have this car in Europe or something, if you change that, I don't know. Here's your home screen. I'm on Launcher 4, is what I currently use. So there'll be another section to change that over here. This guy tells you if your GPS is working, so it's pretty good. You can see the controls working. A lot of reflection here. But yeah, you can see, and it will say right here, uh, successfully, right? And that will say the GPS status if it's successful or not. Uh, this is your allowed and amp switch and equalizer. Uh, these work in some way with with uh, the way. All right, so loud and amp switch do like you would expect. Um, I don't really know what amp switch does. Maybe that's a turn on. There's a wire that plugs into like an external amp, maybe, but I still gotta play these more. Loud does it does make it louder. I don't know the how that works compared to like an old version of a 
because there's two or three different ways to turn the amp on here, so I don't know which one does what. I'll need some more clarity, clarification on that. Uh, equalizer takes you to your equalizer menu. I made a separate video all about the new equalizer enjoying, so that should, you know, you know, all these settings here, which I covered in a uh, separate video. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Because this one's uh, much more advanced than the previous uh, settings there, right? So, you can get to that multiple ways as well. Uh, so here are some more settings menu here. You go a little deeper. This one you need the passwords. Passwords 3368. Alright, dormancy, that's where if you turn the power off it goes uh, into like a reduced kind of like putting your computer in hibernate or sleep, right? And so uh, I don't know what radar switch does. Reverse line guide means so my camera that I have on my Jeep at Brand Motion does not have these lines on it. They are placed on there by the joint camera. Uh, so I'll turn that guy off. You can see now I don't have those yellow lines. Alright, so an antenna normally on. I don't know what that's uh, what that has to do with anything. Something to do with the radio, I'm sure, but I don't understand that. USB anomaly detection, I think that's just so it can tell you when a USB has been unplugged or replugged. MCU panel key, uh, also don't know what that is. Something, to, maybe these, I don't know. Unknown sources will let you install from unknown sources, so like an and, uh, Android security thing. Door lock interface, I don't know what that is, and it has a password, I don't know what that password is. Show app right flash. Also don't know what that does. Automatic start and stop. Also don't know what that does. Amp enable. Again, something to do with the amp. I don't know. I don't know if it's the internal amp versus having an external amp or no amp. Uh, I have an internal amp. DVR type. If you join sales that camera, that can use it as a car DVR. Uh, so that would be for their special system information. Uh, I don't know what that does, so I'm not going to mess with it. Car brand logo, that's when you reboot the device, you can change your logo to anything else. Like right now it says join, uh, I'll change it to Jeep so you can see what it looks like when I reboot it. In a second I'll show you the reboot so you can see what Jeep looks like. So there's a lot of options here. A lot of cars, I have no idea if they are, here's Jeep. You see some English is broken sometimes, car mark is setting, right? <laughs> Volume balance settings. Uh, that's right, so your radio can be louder, or your auxiliary, or Bluetooth volume, Navi volume, music volume. I, mean, uh, I don't really mess with those either. Model selection, and that would be, I think, if you have a CAN bus connector. I use a pack module. There's a video on that as well, so I don't... Uh, yeah, that'd be if you had a different... They make car-specific units. They make a Jeep unit, they make a Volkswagen unit, etc. So you would change that for your CAN bus protocol. USB selection. No, oh, good. Alright, so... Uh, I got a phone call in the middle, so I cut that off there. Uh, but, so you can see... USB protocol... Uh, I'll leave that 2.0. Don't see any reason to change it. Uh, why you want to make it lesser unless your device wouldn't work. TV type. You can actually hook up a TV antenna in the back and get TV in there. I have no use for that. Don't know what one click setup does. I uh, don't like that. Gonna leave that alone. Display calibration. Cam box upgrade. If you had their cam breast adapter, that's not a way to upgrade it. Display calibration. I assume that's one of those things where you touch the screen. I don't want to do that. Uh, MCU upgrade. And that's the internal MCU is what controls the hardware of this unit, not the Android program. Amp upgrade also. There's internal amplifier. There's an upgrade for that touchscreen study so you can remap your touchscreen locations. Panel key study would be to 
uh, change the way these guys on the side here work, right? So power versus back. I don't need to change any of that. I like how it is, but there's a lot of options if you wanted to set them to different things. Or if they weren't working, you could also do that. Which again, 3368. And let's see. DB dimension box. Alright, so Bluetooth mic sensitivity, that's when you make phone calls, how sensitive you want the microphone to be. You can change it to low or high, leave it on high, which seems to be alright. So here's your where you can change your built-in join launcher, right? So we click there, and this will be 8083, I think. No. 8081. Nope. Let's try 3368 again. Alright, I can't remember the password for to change that screen, but I never use that home screen now. I'll try to remember it and add it on later or in the comments. Alright, so let's go back to that's the end of car settings here. There's the equalizer I showed you earlier. Uh so easy connected. Uh, is where you can plug a phone in. Uh, again, I don't really see any point of doing that, uh, but if you watch my other video, I, I show how that works. It just replicates your screen on there. Uh, I don't want to do that right now. So, uh, it's good to have it, I guess, if you want it. It's pointless to me. For me, I think the whole reason of having a Android head unit is to use the Android software itself instead of replicating my phone. If I wanted to use my phone, I would get the previous Sony I had with Car uh, Play or Android Auto. File manager is built in, so you can see. Uh, here's my SD card. You can see I got connected. There's a weird little bug where if you go to the regular Android settings and go to storage it does not see my micro SD card but it's working if I go to you know if you go to play music uh, all my music is saved to the micro SD card go to my settings and storage location you can see I'm using a 64 gig card and it sees it just fine. It saves all my music there just fine. Same thing with Google Maps. Everything works on the SD card. It just does not see it in the default Android story storage settings. Don't know why it used to on the older units, but it's just a bug they gotta fix. Uh, so again, but file manager sees it so you can move stuff if you need to in some capacity. Galleries, if you have pictures in there, I don't have any pictures, I don't, that's just the internal storage on my SD card, I don't have anything hooked up, if you wanted to, you could uh, well, yeah, they include a copy of iGo I don't like it, I think it's kind of slow it's clunky, I'll do a separate review because all these units I think include some kind of version of it, but see how long it takes to open up, and then it's not live traffic like Google or Waze is and it's just, uh, I don't know, uh, it's kind of ugly too. Uh, it's big and clunky, I like that, but like the, you know, it's weird, and it gets rid of your bar up here, so it's just not for me. Oh yeah, so sorry, I just, that's where you close. So if we hit this recent apps button, you'll get this little close all screen here. Alright, so what else we got? We have their built-in music player. <laughs> they must have storage. <laughs> it's playing their built-in. Must be the iGo setting. So, uh, slap no. that. I never use this, as you can tell. I don't know what that's playing. That must be something from the either iGo or Google Maps, or I assume iGo since it appears in another language. Uh, Navi is just 
the same thing this button over here does. It's just linked to whatever navigation app you have. So I have Google Maps, which uh, is my preferred method. There's also Waze works. Most people want to use Waze probably, but yeah, you know, they're both uh, relatively quick. Yeah, so it's a little slower, but they work, and that's the more important part. Uh, let's see. Radio, people probably care about that. I don't use the radio. Uh, you can see the RDS works very tightly here. Um, if you wanted to save this radio station somewhere, you would just hold this button, and it saves it. The same change your bands from your various, you have three different FM to save in uh, 1 a.m. there. This is like a scan or a seek or something. Uh, the same radio application is from the previous unit and I have that listed there. Uh, so if you wanted to see the previous review, you can see basically all this stuff. And I'm going to mute that. Alright, so And then you got various options here, right? So, the settings is if you wanted to rename the station something, you could. And the save location. Uh, this part is relevant, though, if you wanted to change it to your USA versus uh, other settings there. Alright, and once again, the same thing, it can play in the background. And if you use one of the join widgets, you can still see it on your main screen. Uh, there's a yeah, this guy. I don't know, that's my Bluetooth, so I thought there was a radio widget. Maybe not. There we go. This guy's a radio widget. Yeah, so you can see. If you want to have a widget on your home screen, you can do that, and then as soon as you touch it, it takes you there. I just muted again because I don't care about the radio. I never use radio. Alright, that covers that. They include this Zen HD thing, right? Live wallpaper. Uh, so it does. So let's see if I want to set to that. You can see it has this live wallpaper with the tree branch. And then I think at some point a bird comes in there somewhere. It's neat. Yeah, there's a bird, but that's okay, I guess. I don't really need that in my life. Uh, the steering wheel controls is also there. Uh, but I showed you that earlier. So, the next guy here is this Touch Assist app. So, it is how you... This is why a lot of people should be interested in this, right? Because when you first get a join, it comes up like this. And you have this little dot here, right? You can move it around. And it'll stay where you leave it. If you touch it, it gives you options here, right? So if you accelerate, I guess that like kills some RAM in the back. Kills open processes in the background. Yeah, there you go. So it cleared my memory to it. The, the settings of this app... So you can take a screenshot, you can adjust your volume. Uh, if you want to make the screen go blank, you can. All right, see my dot's still there. Hit my dot. Uh, if you want to go to your, it'll be like a shortcut to your apps. All right. You can adjust your brightness. Uh, that didn't do anything. Oh, that just does a preset. I don't like that. That changes like a preset brightness level. I usually use it pretty low when my lights are on. And then fully bright when my lights aren't on. Uh, I don't know what common does. Uh, it says you can put like a favorites, I guess. Either way, uh, I don't use this guy. It's useful, I guess, if you want to, but uh, a lot of questions usually come in the forum about how to get rid of this dot. Here's how you do it you go to touch assist, it's like a little finger touching the dot, and you have all these different options, right? So, Unclick these two guys and he goes away pretty much until you turn it back on. 
Uh, I don't know what the other things do. I don't care because I don't use it. All right, video player, same thing. If you had videos on the USB drive, it would play them. I had a reference to that in my old video. Uh, again, that one. I think it's pretty much the same app. Displays and YouTube I've installed. All right, so that's all the built-in. Oh, there's also this operation guide if you wanted to see some basic guides here. This is also pretty similar to the previous one. Um, and then you have your built-in join features. So you can see your about device and I'll show you it's Android 6.0.1 uh, Intel quad-core unit uh, Bluetooth version, quantification, so oh there's your digital amp version right and so you can see my system versions from the July 5th update. So if you have an update, and Joying is great about this, they post updates about once a month, and you can always see what date it is. This will tell you what screen resolution it is, and then this is what, when the date of my current update. So if they put an August 5th out, then I'll know this is a newer one. And if you do this, you'll get the standard Android stuff, so it does appear to be Marshmallow, even though it doesn't look like Marshmallow settings there. Uh, so, but either way, it does seem pretty good. I don't care about that little game. Alright, so that's about all we need to know there. Uh, and it's all the CPU-Z, so you can see some more detail. This didn't come by default on installing this, so you can see it's got four cores. Uh, you can see clock speed, CP load, all this stuff, right? And if you change this guy, device. Uh, it comes from Kroger, apparently. Alright, so it's a rock chip, Android, Sophia board, total RAM. There we go. So you can see we got our two gigs, almost 2 gigs of RAM there. Internal storage, cable storage, right? Uh, system. You want to see that? It tells you the Android version. You can fake that, I guess, but it seems legit to me. Uh, I don't know about battery. It seems irrelevant. Thermal. So this is where on the older units, this one, the newer unit, single in with the amp, and they're supposed to have better cooling. Because I think my old one got damaged from getting too hot. So I don't know what's supposed to be. I just go by the adjoining forum and. Uh, some guys were saying theirs were up in the 90s. Mine generally stays in the 70s and 60s, so I think that's pretty good. I don't have, I did not install a heat sink or any of that stuff. It's just fresh out the box. I don't know what that is. Alright, so, you can see there's most of your information we want to see there. Uh, right now I have it connected to my house guest Wi-Fi, which is called Stranger Danger. So, if you want to see how fast it goes, uh, Wi-Fi connection is pretty good. Uh, as you can see, I'm in my driveway. And my router is in my basement. So, I don't know, we're good 15, 20 feet plus, plus a brick wall on the floor in between there. So we'll do a speed test on my Wi-Fi from my house to my driveway. And it's all good. Not amazing but we are a little ways away all right and just as a double check here we'll see all right so 11 megs downs not terrible and all right so just so you can see i have my hawaii mate 9 hawaii mate 9 on stranger danger as well and i'll run a test side by side so we can see how it compares how the Wi-Fi antenna compares in there so a little bit faster on my uh, Huawei Mate 9 uh, but not shockingly so so and I would expect a you know the Mate 9 was a flagship phone last year so I would hope that it gets better speeds in here but uploads still better in there so it's pretty strong Wi-Fi antenna for the joint here all right and so now uh, a lot of people use it without Wi-Fi. Obviously, you don't have data running constantly. I did install. Uh, here you can see it sticks out a little bit, but never hits my leg or anything. This is a 
sync up drive from T-Mobile. So if I change that uh, to JeepNet, that's what I named it. So now my T-Mobile network, right? So we see uh, we're on JeepNet, right? So if we run the test again, you can see what kind of T-Mobile signal I'm getting from my driveway. Using well, that's using that uh, hotspot, right? Using the, so it's basically a hot, uh, basically it's a T-Mobile hotspot that plugs into your ODB port. So you see, there we go. I'm getting good, almost 30 meg. Now I've turned off my Huawei, the Wi-Fi, and I'm just on my T-Mobile signal, and I'll run a speed, and we'll see that I would expect significantly faster because again, but I'm getting 27 downs, nothing. Well, no. We're going pretty much neck and neck, so it's pretty good. So, T Mobile's pretty decent in my area. So, all right, so that's a win for the join there on the Wi Fi. Because so even though I'm using the T Mobile sync up drive, it's still a Wi Fi antenna that's picking up from the hotspot. It's not like a 4G plug straight into this thing. All right, so that's about it, I guess. So, we can look at the regular car settings so these are the Android settings here um, they're pretty similar there's a couple different things like you can see like this brightness level and that will adjust based on so night is whenever you have your lights on so when I turn those lights on you can see it auto dims let me turn back off and brightens back up now there are developer options uh, I forget the password. I think it's 3368. No. Yeah, there you go. So, there's full developer options here. There's a lot of things you can do here. Um, and like I said, it goes pretty fluid. Um, some apps don't work right because this will be forced in landscape mode, but it's very rare that it comes across. Like, I think the Yahoo Weather app doesn't work, which is why I use AccuWeather, but AccuWeather works fine. Uh, yeah, so you can see your forecast and everything. Everything seems to work pretty good there. So, uh, that's about it, I guess. I can show you individual apps if you want, but they're the same apps as you would see on Android. So, like, I'll show you one weather. It looks pretty much the same as it would look on your phone. This is the first time I've used it So since I've installed it. I just recently installed this app. I recently, this head unit, as you can see in my video. So... Yeah, we can see. It looks nice and clear. So it's nice having your weather on your head unit here. Um, generally, I play music via Google Play Music. Sometimes I use Spotify if I bounce back and forth. Um, and I pretty much use Google Maps at all times for my navigation. Occasionally I'll use Waze, but for the most part it's Google Maps. And yeah, there are your widgets here, right? All right, so uh, any questions, put them in the comments. If you want to see a follow-up video, I'll try to make one of those as well. If there's something you want in more in-depth about. And I'll try to put the password to that one setting I couldn't remember. You can install any kind of launcher as well, but I generally stick to this one. It's just played out pretty good for me. I got I like the stupid background. But uh, so let's just go here. All right, so I like having my weather up top here and then these are the apps I usually use so I'll hit this if I want to go navigation music I use Waze that's here that's Bluetooth music and that's settings if I need to get something which really I don't use that often so I couldn't move it all right so uh, that's my join I'll put the model number in the description and the title probably so any questions comments uh, feel free to fire away